Hello, friends. Mike here at Guitar Tricks, back with part five of our five-day practice series. Hope you're getting lots out of this, some great ideas. Of course, this is not an end-all, be-all list of things to practice, but uh, hopefully it's given you some ideas of some things that you can put in there to really sharpen your skills. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. And while you're at it, hit that like button. It would really help out. Now, back to the lesson. All right, so day five, once again, a chromatic warm up for five minutes off the top. This one, instead of just doing groups of four on each string, we're gonna add an extra note into it. So we're gonna play the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth fret of the low string, but just add a fifth note on the next string up at the fifth fret. And then what I'm going to do is start on the second note of our sequence, which would be the sixth fret of the low string, and play five notes from there. Okay, so you end up with this sequence. Okay, one more time slowly. What makes it extra challenging is that you want to keep your alternate picking nice and straight through that whole thing, and you're going to be changing strings, so it's a little bit challenging. Once you end up at the end of that, then you start all over on the next string. Okay, and go all the way up, and then of course do the same thing in reverse, coming back down. So it's quite a challenge, but a great way to warm up and get the fingers moving. All right, for my next 10 minute practice chunk, I'm gonna work on triad shapes, okay? So what we're gonna do first of all is figure out the triad shapes on the D, G, and B strings. Now, the triad shapes are basically the three note chord shapes that make up a major or a minor chord. So for example, an A major chord could be at the second fret of the D, G, and B. Or it also could be at the 7th fret of the D, 6th fret of the G, 5th fret of the B. Or it also could be at the 11th fret of the D, 9th fret of the G, 10th fret of the B. And so we want to get familiar with these triad shapes um, for major and minor chords and learn how to play up and down the fretboard with them. So the first exercise, once we've identified what those shapes are, is to just play the same chord up and down the fretboard. Add a little strum pattern to it, turn on a metronome if you like, and just... Part two of this little uh, practice exercise would be to do the one, four, and five chords using triads in the key of, let's say, keeping it in the key of A. Then our D chord would use a different triad shape in that same position. And then our five chord would have to move up two frets with the same shape. So you could cycle through one, four, five and make your way up and down the fretboard like this. All right, so a great way to just get familiar with those shapes and start getting used to moving them around the fretboard. All right, so for my next 10 minute chunk, I'm gonna work on some lead licks. And so maybe you've been working on a song or you pulled a lick out of something, and what can you do with that lick to really help uh, add to your arsenal of licks and improvisation? Well, I'm gonna show you an exercise you can use in this 10 minute chunk that will really be helpful. So let's say you learn a lick, uh, let's say it's something like this using the blues scale. 
okay? I'm on the seventh fret of the D string. I go up to five and seven on the G, and then I do a little hammer on pull off, seven, eight, seven to five, back to seven on the D. Okay? What's really useful, first of all, is to locate that exact same lick in different octaves or even the same octaves and play it all over the neck. So you can use this time to just explore all over the neck, finding how to play that lick. Okay, just look for A notes and then try to figure out how to go from there to just transcribe that lick in all positions. You can even, uh, well, what I was doing there was using the same shape, but you don't even have to use the same shape. You can move up a position and figure out how to do it like, like that. I'm, I'm playing at a position up and the fingering's different, but it's the same notes. Okay, so explore that. Now the next thing to do is to take that lick and to play it in different keys. So maybe in D blues, G. Okay, so that, just hearing that lick in different keys really helps out a lot. And then finally, take that lick and make all sorts of variations. So play around with it. Add a little phrase to the end of it. Add a different note to the end of it. You can turn one lick into many licks just by experimenting with that basic idea and just taking it somewhere else at the end of it. All right, that takes us to our final warm down little five minute uh, chunk of time. And we're gonna stick with the blues on this one and play a boogie pattern in open position. So I'm gonna start with the blues in A off an A power chord. I'm gonna play a typical blues rhythm here where I've got the second fret of the D string and I'm alternating between that and the fourth fret of the D string. And I'm doing all down strokes on that shuffle rhythm. Okay, so go as slow as you need to go and go through the 12 bar blues here, play with the backing track, play with the metronome and go as slow as you need to in order to play that nice and cleanly. All right, and that'll be it for our five day practice routine. I hope you enjoyed some of the ideas in this particular series. And please, if there's anything you'd like to see on the channel, leave it down in the comments. And for all things guitar, please check out guitartricks.com for easy step-by-step -step instruction. All right, we'll see you on the next one.